I am genuinely pissed right now. I've never encountered a more dramatic car than this 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback. It has been down for two full weeks and I've been battling ignition problems, alternator problems, voltage regulator problems, starter problems, oil problems. I've been encountering carburetor problems too, radio problems. I've been encountering so many problems with this car ever since I purchased it, which was about three months ago. The first problem that we have went through was my basically my wheel falling off. If you guys have not seen that, my rotor bearing fell off. I was this close from losing my wheel on the road, which actually one of my buddies, uh, which is the same guy that drifted my Shelby, he had a 1970 Chevelle and his wheel came off. So it's not just the Mustang, it's just classic cars in general. So there's just so many issues with this car that I hate and that I'm struggling with right now, I decided to make this video, which is video, don't get me wrong, don't get the title mistaken, is a very popular style of video that car enthusiasts, car YouTubers do, which explains the downsides of owning a car like this. Don't get me wrong, I love this car, I'm not selling it, I'm not getting away from it at all, but just to let you know, I cannot wait to put a coyote in this thing, because this 289 is just driving me crazy. So today we are going to be talking about the five things I hate about my 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback with a 289. And we are just gonna talk about pretty much everything that I hate, because I think right now is a perfect opportunity struggling with this car to get it running and provide content for you guys. So let's get right into it. I'm not in the greatest mood, so we're just gonna dive right into it. Reason number one why I hate this 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback is how unreliable it is. I've never encountered so many issues and it has been crazy. I'll go ahead and explain everything that I've gone through. The first issue that I had was with my rotor basically falling off of the hubcap there. The inner bearing shredded and my wheel was basically on the verge of falling off. If it wasn't for my caliper, it would have fallen off. So I got super lucky. The second issue that I had was my coil going bad. I fixed the coil, but the coil that I put in only lasted for one day. Do not get cheap AutoZone parts, please. That actually ruined my ignition module, my ignition system, which is underneath this distributor cap. So I had to replace the Pertronic system underneath there. New rotor, new cap, new everything. It was so annoying. The car started up right away but it would not stay without the battery. So what does that tell you? Alternator is bad. So I swapped out the alternator with a new alternator. Then I noticed that the alternator also destroyed my voltage regulator. So I had to swap out for a new voltage regulator. And then get this, after I swapped out the voltage regulator, alternator, ignition coil, and the ignition module, the rotor, and the distributor cap, my radio goes out. The fuse to my radio, which is right here, I didn't even know that these fuses existed, popped. I got that problem, and then also when I was cranking it, now my starter is going out. So these things are just unreliable. It's super easy to fix. They're super cheap to fix, but they go out so much. It's just unbelievable how unreliable this damn car is. I cannot wait till I get my 2014 Shelby GT500 back from paint, because she's definitely getting a grounding. Once when Maida comes back, she's she's staying in the garage. I'm not taking her out just because she's a hassle. Oh, also, and one thing as well, sorry, my hair is kind of crazy right now. One thing as well, when I started her up, the idle was bad. And who would have known that the carburetor can unadjust itself for no reason? I had to raise up the idle and I had to add fuel because it was running lean. So, issue after issue, problem after problem, we're encountering. Now let's go on to number two, which we're gonna get into. We kinda have to drive to it. But first, let's take a little break. Let's get a little breather in. Now let's start up the car. Hopefully it does not die. We'll see, but if it dies, that's some more things to complain about. Choke on, give it a little fuel. Let's fire her up. dirty now but let me tell you this cold start and just how she drives kind of makes up for all the downsides that I encounter now I gotta explain some things while we drive to the destination on the other reason why I hate this car no I'm not complaining it just really grinds my gears when simple and little things like this tear me down from driving this beautiful car yes 
I did know what I was getting myself into when I purchased this car. I actually like it because I could provide you guys with the content and what to expect and other information. I'm not complaining about this car at all. This is just simply what I do not like about the car. I would never give this car up. This car is gonna be staying on the channel for quite a while, but sometimes there's just some inconvenience that can be avoided. And honestly, the reasons why my car is breaking down should not be happening. But anyways, that's just what you deal with when driving a classic car. And I already see the comments coming. Hey Nate, you spent over $30,000 on a car that's broken down. No, I spent $30,000 on history. I spent $30,000 on one of the most iconic Mustangs ever created. I spent $30,000 to follow my dreams, to drive a car that I've been wanting to drive for my whole life. So don't even come at me with that $30,000 comment because I already know you guys are, are, are typing away already. I wouldn't be surprised if people still comment that, but you do it for the ride, you do it for the love, you do it for the smell, because these classic cars, they're a different breed, and I love them so much. Well, 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 if it isn't Beverly's second home, the good old gas station, part number two on why I hate this car, I'm gassing up every single day. Number one, because this car gets like 10 miles per gallon. And number two, my gas gauge doesn't work. And I actually found out that it's not just me, and I know the car is dirty. Don't even come at me with that. I'm gonna wash it soon. But it actually happens on a lot of Mustangs. A lot of classic Mustangs, their gas gauge does not work. And mine works from like 100% to 50%. And then that's basically my go-to. To. I am seriously driving on faith. I tr I gas up every single day and gas mileage is just really, really bad. And no, I'm not complaining about gas mileage. I've never really had good gas mileage ever on my cars. One, because they're boosted. Or number two, because of this classic car. But the thing that, uh, that really gets me is that this engine is naturally aspirated and it naturally gets 10 miles per gallon. My Shelby GT500 has 1,000 horsepower and it gets 10 miles per gallon on the highway. So there's a difference between a boosted 1,000 horsepower Mustang compared to a classic naturally aspirated pushrod motor. So gas mileage is something that uh, is draining my wallet really quickly. It's all about the miles per gallon. Not something I complain in, but just something that really irks me with this car. And don't even get me started with how you gas this thing up because get ready for a fuel bath. I'm so awkward just holding this thing like this and I could guarantee you fuel is gonna spill but and there's no indicator that it's full like the newer ones like you just seriously have to go until it spills out or until you hear it you, like you, you just gotta really catch it before it gushes out. All filled up no gas she's dirty but damn gas mileage there's nothing too big but i don't mind the smiles per gallon at all you guys want to know what the third reason why i hate this car just look at the weather tell me what you guys see 84 87 89 it's gonna be close to 90s this full entire week and yep you guessed it no ac you don't realize how much you miss ac until you don't have it it is brutal. It is brutal in the summertime driving around just with the windows down. The windows down is does an okay job, but there are some days where golly, it is hot. It is really, really hot. I don't know who decided to jack up the prices on aftermarket AC installs and then make them rocket science to install. I don't know why nobody just comes out with a budget-friendly, easy-to-install AC on all these classic cars. Like, it is... For, like, a full AC system, it's, like, $1,500. And for, like, the quality ones with installation and all that, it's, like, two grand. With the full dashboard conversion and all that stuff, the labor is crazy already. But AC installs on these classic Mustangs are crazy absolutely crazy and i just want some nice cold ac that's the one thing because i'd be sweating and my balls get pretty hot driving this thing reason number four on why i hate this car is how unsafe it is uh, i'm driving through my favorite spot here in otai san diego it's very very unsafe it's nothing is safe and secure steering look at i'm going straight but my steering wheel is that loose brakes are not reliable even though i have power brakes 
no airbags on any of these sides. Now I know that the rotors could go out from the bearings for no reason, just because based on bad grease or overheating of the rotors. There's just so many different things that can cause this car from going into mayhem and causing serious injury to myself, others. It's just not a safe ride at all. Look at this view, boys. This is such a nice view. I love coming here. Another reason why it's unsafe is I was actually recommended by a lot of you guys to carry a fire extinguisher just in case. I haven't gotten one yet, but you know it's not safe when you have to carry a fire extinguisher in your car. Another reason why it's not safe is last time my car broke down because of the ignition module going out. I had to pull off to the side of the road in the pitch dark. Imagine seeing Beverly in the pitch dark. You cannot see her. Emergency lights, they do work, but they drain out your battery really quick. Any lighting that's on while the car is not on is going to drain your battery incredibly. So I need to buy some flares or some cones just in case my car were to break down again at nighttime. This was one of the reasons why I did not wash her because I was coming to this place and I need a detail and wash it anyways, but we're giving her a little time to breathe. When it comes to safety and everything like that, it's just really unpredictable when it comes down to these classic cars. That's one of the things that really gets me nervous, always on the edge. I just wish it was a little bit more safer, but again, with these cars, you're not doing anything crazy. You're simply just cruising and that's all I really got this car. I don't do anything crazy with it. Now that's that, so let's close her up and get driving. I'm honestly having a very difficult time of thinking of the fifth reason. I'm probably gonna make up something that uh, doesn't even really matter. Um, this car doesn't have a lot, but the safety and the unreliability had a lot to do. Had a lot in one, or had a lot in those two. So let's, let's go drive back and let's talk about something that I'm really nitpicking on, nothing too serious but uh, something that I would like to have and uh, basically go from there. finally back home and that is the wrap of the video thank you guys so much for staying tuned don't get me wrong i don't hate the car i really really do love it those are just the things that bug me when it comes to this car car was not running great at the end of the drive something is going on i heard something drop i don't know what it was but uh we're gonna figure it out the car is probably gonna die again very very shortly 
that is the unreliability aspect of it but we'll see what happens i'll keep you guys in touch hope you guys enjoyed the video comment down below what you guys think about this as well as if you have a classic car let me know what you hate about it thank you guys so much for staying tuned for the video i'll catch you guys on the next one deuces <laughs>